Hey everybody, Alicia here with Terra Drift, your travel and adventure guides. And today we're gonna talk about sleeping in your car. Specifically, we're gonna give you a rundown of the platform we built in the back of our Prius so that we could more comfortably sleep in our vehicle when we go on long road trips. It also happens to be a super way to organize camping gear when you're not sleeping in your car. Listen, if you do a quick Google search for, I don't know, how to build a Prius platform, several things will come up. You'll probably even run into some posts from our boy Hotel Prius and whom we even consulted when we were building our own platform with plans to sleep in our car on a nice long road trip this summer. What we didn't find were platform builds that involved removing the entire back seat of a Prius. Plenty of people were building platforms over the folded down back seats, that sort of thing. And a lot of them were little single birth bed type dealies, but there were two of us, so that doesn't work. So we set out on a mission to design and build our own. And we figured, hey, if we put this much work into it, why not share it with somebody else who might also be interested in sleeping in their vehicle during long road trips this year or next or the year after or whatever. This platform we built was obviously designed for our Prius, but feel free to customize it for your own needs. We'll share measurements and stuff like that in the description below. And of course, just to reiterate, it involves removing the back seats entirely. Not just the top foldy downy bit, the whole thing, the bench, the back, all of it. Why did we go to that much trouble? Because we wanted to maximize our space. See, when we road trip, we're usually on the road for at least a month at a time, usually two. That means we're carrying a lot of gear and necessities, backpacking equipment, food, camping gear, usually several bulky items that we're testing and reviewing like tents or hammocks. We love traveling with our inflatable kayaks, so we definitely have to get those in there plus all of our clothing, which honestly takes up the least amount of space of anything, and other necessities like, you know, reading material or knitting. So basically removing the entire back seat gave us a lot more room to play with and store all of our gear. Let's start in the back. We used half inch plywood. This is fine for us, but we're pretty light people. So it wasn't that big of a deal if there was a little bowing or something. Uh, however, if you were a little heavier, you might need something thicker um, just so it stands up a little better too, moving around and jostling and jumping in and out of the car. But if we did it again, we might upgrade to three quarters inch or even full inch or possibly a higher grade of plywood. We were trying to save some cash, so this works, but I think eventually we're going to have to replace some of the front foldy downy bits with some heavier duty plywood um, just because it warps a bit more and gives under the weight of our bodies. But as you can see, we did clip the corners so it could extend as far back as possible without the hatchback slamming into it. Nothing we measured too closely that was accurate. It was just kind of like fit it in, see where we need it, draw a line cut the corners. As you can see, it's stacked onto two two by fours, which are connected via kind of a U-shaped brackety tie dealy. That's a technical term. You can look it up. You can see what it looks like here. It's basically just a U bracket with screws going both into the bottom two by four and up into the top two by four. And we have two of those on each set of stacked two by fours. We did two stacked like that so that we could slide in six-ish inch tubs to store all of our gear and supplies. So when we were road tripping and now when we're camping, we keep a lot of food in one of these, which as you can see, they're plenty long. So we have lots of space to store food and edible supplies. And in the other one, we often store just camping gear, like extra, you know, blankets and towels and uh, sleeping bag covers and a fan and stuff like that. So camping stuff was in there and our particular tubs are short enough so that we can also scoot them all the way back and fit a hammock packed up right here or our really dope camp chairs fit right here perfectly. Didn't plan it, but they do, they fit perfectly, it's awesome. That has been extremely handy for storing and organizing things 
during our road trip, but also when we are just taking the car out camping. You can also see that this doesn't extend into these little wells on the side. So there's extra storage space in the side here. When we were road tripping, all of this car maintenance stuff like brake fluid and engine oil were all stored underneath where we didn't have to get to them uh, <laughs> very often or ever. Usually our road trips tend to go very smoothly. The, but we stuffed, you know, more cooking supplies here or hats or whatever in these wells and there's still plenty of space for that sort of thing, as well as trekking poles fit nicely right back in here. So lots of hidden storage space, which was really handy. Now, when we first built this, we just put it in and we were like, this will be fine, right? It'll stay put because it's heavy. Not true at all. The first time we braked, the whole thing just slid forward and tipped down <laughs> into the floor, even with a bunch of stuff in it. So it's important to anchor this in place, but also still be able to keep the spare tire and you know other and other car maintenance tools accessible during a road trip. So what we did is we drilled holes in the top of the platform here and just tied it off with some cord to these D-ring anchors in the back of the Prius. That way the whole platform stays put when we brake and when we're driving around and things. But if we do need to get to the spare tire or engine oil or a jack or whatever, we can just untie these really quick, tip the whole thing up and still be able to get to what we need, which is really important. So we have one of those on both sides of the platform. And as you can see, the platform doesn't extend all the way to the edge and the two by fours are cut at a slant. That's because that is how the hatchback is shaped when you close it. So be mindful of that, that sort of angle of the hatchback uh, when you're cutting. Let's move forward, shall we? As you can see, we have removed the entire back seat of the Prius. The whole thing is gone. All of the really important wires and cables in this car are covered up, so you're probably not gonna damage any of them without really, really trying hard. And the seats are not that difficult to remove. So if you do want to do this, it's not like it's a huge deal. You need a couple of tools to release some bolts, uh, but it takes a couple of minutes max and you can get the whole bench and the back of the seat rest out of here no problem and as you can see that created what is that a foot more uh storage space and room for gear and stuff uh, that said if you do not want to take out the seats this platform build should still work because the two by fours here uh, are resting on the back platform of the Prius and the back seats do lay flat when you fold them down. So if you don't want to take out the seats, you don't have to, but this build uh, will work either way. We built this platform in three sections. You can see the second section right here. The third, which is technically the headrests, is hidden under this part, which you can see when we fold it down. But uh, basically we, we built it so that these two by fours will line up with these two by fours and that creates the majority of the support system for the platform. So the second section will be mostly supported by this two by four meeting this two by four. For extra support, we built these guys, which has more of those U brackets, as you can see. So we measured each to go right here on the floor. And I will show you here how that works for extra support. So you just fold this guy down like so, slide it into the bracket, and ta-da, you have more support. Ta-da. And as I mentioned, folding this down when we went, you know, on a hike or to walk around a town, this hid all of our stuff that was, you know, stored down here. So when somebody looked in our windows, they didn't go, oh, hey, look at all the gear. Let's break into this car and steal it. Safety first. As you can see, the second section is attached by three brackets, uh, which are fairly heavy duty to make that easy to fold up and down. Then the third section is these headrests, and I'll show you what we did here. But first, I need to move the seat forward because in order to have enough space for us to lay back here, the seats do have to be pretty much all the way forward. Let's do that. Now that that's done, these just fold down. Again, the bracket there. But 
there's not really anything to support that. And that's not gonna make a very good headrest. So we put another short two by four here and put it on a swivel. We just put a screw in relatively loosely so that we could swivel this in and out and then flip the headrest down so it's got something to support it. That is one of the things that will eventually need replaced if we keep using this. Because as you can see, if you lean on the side, it's a little bit squishy. <laughs> it's not the most uh, supported thing and could probably use another one of those supportive two by four legs like we put in the second section uh, right up in the front there. Um, again, thicker plywood or a higher grade of plywood would probably be better for this than the half than the half inch you know kind of scrap plywood that we used but it did work and we slept in this probably about a dozen nights uh, over two months and nothing broke nothing gave out um, and it was pretty comfortable we put sleeping pads on here so we each had our own separate little section uh, we're both fairly small people. So the fact that I'm 5'3 and Josh is 5'6 meant we could sleep comfortably back here. If you're much taller than about 5'6 or 5'8, you're probably not gonna be able to fit sleeping comfortably in a Prius. So sorry tall dudes and ladies, you're gonna need a bigger vehicle. When we built it, I was a little worried about the headspace. Uh, I do not get claustrophobic, neither does Josh, so that wasn't really a concern. I was more concerned with um, whether or not I was gonna be able to move once I got in here. And it is a little tricky getting in and out. You do have to get low and squirm a little bit, but once you're in here, it's actually quite cozy. Uh, there was plenty of room to sort of like prop yourself up on your elbows. Uh, you know, we had the laptop in here every once in a while to watch a movie in the evenings, no big deal. And lights and things were within easy reach if we needed, you know some illumination. As for privacy, uh, we've long discussed doing something like making nice little custom curtains for all of the windows. We have not done that yet. But what we have done on multiple road trips is get some inexpensive black cardstock, which we cut to fit in each window, and then just sort of slide them in. If you cut them just the right size, they just stick inside the window perfectly. Uh, we used some suction cups to help adhere the back window because it is just sort of like hanging, right? But that black really blocks not only light, but it makes it seem like there's probably not anyone sleeping in the car, which is what you want in many circumstances, like, I don't know, Walmart parking lots. Just one more tip regarding sleeping in your car. Depending on the season, you may or may not want to leave windows open, but you definitely do need to leave at least one window cracked a teeny tiny little bit so that air can get in or out. You're not gonna suffocate, but you may find it slightly harder to sleep. So crack a window, stuff a bug net in if you're worried about insects. And in the warmer months, maybe think about getting a battery powered fan to stick into one of those windows. We used one a couple of nights this summer, plugged into a little backup battery. It lasted all night, no problem. So there you have it. Like I said, we're gonna put the full plans with measurements and all of the bits and pieces and parts and screws and stuff that you need in the description below so that you can build your own if you want to. Uh, if you do, psh, Send us some pics, yo. We'd love to see your platform builds. And if you improve on it, let us know that too so we can steal your ideas. I mean, utilize, utilize your ideas. That about wraps it up, guys. What do you think? Would you sleep in your car? Do you sleep in your car? Would you prefer it to a crappy hotel? Would you prefer it to a crappy hotel during a pandemic? Either way, it provides a legit way to travel on the cheap no matter where you're going. And if you happen to have a pre that's going there, will be super cheap. As always, Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful in any way, shape, or form, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you feel so inclined. We promise to delight and enthrall you with all sorts of sustainable and outdoorsy content. And go give us a follow on our social channels. We'd love to be friends on Facebook and be connected on Instagram so we can chat 
about all things sustainable travel and adventure. And if you want more detailed written instructions, head over to the blog. We will put it in the link below where we put more pictures and measurements and all kinds of stuff to help you follow along in the build process. Also, there's lots of cool stuff like gear reviews. Thanks for watching. Wander on.